ya Garissa imepata mwanamke wa kwanza kuchaguliwa mwaka wa 2017. Hapa namzungumzia Sofia Abnur kama anavyoripoti Hamza Yusuf kutoka kaunti ya Garissa. Furaha ni sehemu ya uso wake baada ya kujaribu bahati yake katika uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2013. First Ila sasa nyota yake imengaa baada ya kushinda ubunge wa ijara akiwa mwanamke wa kwanza kaskazini mwa Kenya kupenya katika ngome hiyo. People tell, tell me mama you are resistant and you want to continue with a very painful exercise. Na mimi naambia yes, I want to continue with this because I believe one day the people of Ijara will appreciate me and they will accept what you know because without me offering myself then who else will offer? Japo msimu wa kampeni umekwisha kumbukumbu za dhihaka alizopata zingali hai. Kila kitu ambayo walisema ni kitu ambayo I expected them to tell me that we will not give responsibility to a woman because she will deliver she will go to maternity. That's what I was told in 1997. Now I'm not told so. But in 1997 I was told when when we give you the responsibility you will go for maternity. Who will sit in the in the in the, in the, in the who represent Ijara in parliament mapenzi ya kuungwa mkono na familia yake ulifuta machozi na machungu aliyopitia mkononi mwa mahasimu wake it was a myth that women can't run in our culture but that has been demystified now any girl who has a dream can look up to her and 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 and, and just be just take her as a role model my family my brothers you know they were abused they were told you why should the woman go for the for the position and you the boys the men are here and they said we want her first so i've had a very supportive brothers and sisters who stood with me throughout from 1997 they never looked back adiwai kudumu kama mkurugenzi katika shirika la women kind kenya kando na kushikilia Watfa mwenyekiti wa shirika la kitaifa la usawazishaji wa wakilishi wa jinsia. Sofia anaamini kuwa atatetea haki za watu wa ijara katika bunge la kitaifa pindi tu atakapoapishwa rasmi. Hamza Yusuf KTN News. Garisa. Mtazamaji mara nyingi dhana huwa ni kwamba watu wenye ulemavu hawawezi kujitegemea. Lakini utakubaliana nami kwamba umekosea kwa sababu baadhi ya watu sasa waliona ulemavu sasa wameanza juhudi za kujitegemea na kuweza kujimudu kimaisha. Hebu tazama taarifa yake Shadrack Miti. So yet. Edwin Kipkoge ni kitinda mimba katika familia ya watoto sita. Akiwa na umri wa miaka 30 na mitano, ndiye pekee anayeishi na ulemavu baada ya kuzaliwa bila ya miguu na mkono mmoja. Mamake mzazi alijaribu kumtupa kwenye mapito ya ngombe ili omganyake afe lakini akanusuriwa na wahisani ambao baadaye walimpeleka kwa nyanyake kabla ya kuchukuliwa na watawa wa kanisa katoliki diocese ya Eldoret You're like a scarecrow to others but uh, that similarly to young children but we manage, I managed to survive I used to tell them I, I did not choose to be born the way I was born Alikuwa nakaa na shosho wake kwa sababu mama alipompata akaona awezi kumulinda because aliona kama e, ni kas kupata mtoto aina hiyo watawa hao wa the assumption sisters chini ya aliyekuwa askofu marehemu Cornelius Korir walijitwika jukumu la kumlea na kumpeleka shuleni katika mtihani wake wa KCP alikwangura alama 479 kati ya alama 700 Matokeo aliyompa nafasi ya kujiunga na shule ya upili ya St Patrick's C10 katika kaunti ya Lgeyo Marakwet na baada ya kupata alama ya B plain katika mtihani wa KCSC akajiunga na chuo kikuu cha Moi alikofuzo na shahada ya usimamizi wa biashara Even somebody born in such a state can one day one time be respected in the community and that has been a motivation in my life baada ya kufuzu kutoka chuo kikuu safari ya kusaka ajira haikuwa rahisi kila alikokwenda alipouzwa kutokana na hali yake katika matukio mawili meneja wa benki alikosa kumwajiri kwa misingi kwamba hangeweza kuhesabu fedha because i am looking for a job maybe in a bank these people see, perceive me 
that I cannot count money, eh? I think I'll mess up with So that is what I, I think they saw. Na baada ya masaibu hayo, maisha yake yamebadilika. Mnamo mwaka 2014, Edwin aliajiriwa na serikali ya kaunti ya Ligayo Marakwet kuwa mhasibu mkuu katika kitengo cha ukusanyaji ushuru. Azma ya kutaka kushindana na watu wanaojiweza imemfanya kuwa mfano wa kuigwa. Licha ya ulemavu na masaibu aliyopitia, ndiye pekee aliyekwenda shuleni na hatimaye chuo kikuu katika familia yao. Na sasa ndiye tegemeo la jamii. If I fail, begging will not be an option. Because you see somebody, he has both legs. Maybe they are, he is crippled in a way. Or one hand. But he, you see this person, he can do something. But he chose to beg. Katika kaunti ya Migori, yupo Yunis Mboya, ambaye licha kuzaliwa mzima, haliigua maradhi ya meningitis, akiwa na miaka kumina miwili, na kuishia kwa bubu, na kiziu mnamo mwaka elfu mbili na nne. Tulizungumza nae kupitia mtala mwaluga ya ishara. That time, people were coming with different ideas. Some were thinking that it was time now for marriage, but how? I was deaf. How would it happen? Aliibuka kwa mwanafunzi bora mlemavu katika mtihani wa KCPE wa mwaka 2006 alipochezolea alama 313 na saba katika shule ya viziwi ya Kuja. Mnamo mwaka na kumi, akawa tena mwanafunzi bora katika mtihani wa KCSE wa ulemavu. Alijiunga na chuo kikuu cha Maseno lakini kabla ya kufuzu mnamo mwaka na nne, akajikuta kwenye siasa. Given a chance these people can work they can do they can go to the universities and they can be employed the same way others are employed these children are gifted they have talents they can do better than people see maisha yao edwin veronica na yunis ni dhihirisho kamili la namna bidii ukakamavu na kujitolea kwa ulemavu kwa weza kuwa chanzo cha ufanisi alimradi wapewe fursa shadrack miti ket news Tukifunga taarifa zetu za kumbukizi mwaka 2017 ningependa nikupeleke moja kwa moja hadi katika kaunti ya Kajiado ambapo sasa mtoto wa kike amelia kwamba amekuwa kinyimwa haki kwa miaka mingi elimu amenyimwa na hivyo basi sasa anasema ni wakati ambao jamii inafaa kuamka na kutetea haki za mtoto wa kike Wakiwa na umri miaka kumi na mitatu na kumi na minne mtawalia wasichana hao wako kwenye wimbi la mimba za mapema sawa na ndoa za lazima ambazo zimeshamiri katika jamii hii ya Wamasai na haswa msimu huu ambapo shule zimefungwa. Tulikuwa tunaenda chasi siku. Sawa kijana akakuja. Saa tukapata siku mbili ikaanza kupata mimba walimu wakaenda kunini kunipima akaona niko na mimba nikakuja nyumbani sasa venye tulitokea shule baba akakuja kuongea na mama akamwambia juu kuna shida ya school fees nataka tupeane msichana ndio tupate pesa ya kusomesha kijana lesali namba lo sio jina lake kamili aliyekuwa darasa la tatu katika shule moja hapa kijijini Osupuko kaunti ya Kajiado angali na matumaini ya kurudi shuleni na kutimiza ndoto yake ya kuwa mwalimu Mwanao yana umri wa miezi miwili mimba iliyopachikwa na mvula na jirani wa kidato cha kwanza. Babake mzazi alionyesha kugadhabishwa na tukio hilo asitake kuzungumza kwenye kamera. Sasa ameapa kumuoza msichana huyu kwa madhumuni ya kujipa mali haswa baada ya kugharamia deni la hospitali liko jifungu lia lesalina. Niko na chini ya mzee ya mzee hata msichana. Mzee ana nguvu kabisa kwa baba yake. Baba yake nimeongea mbaya na na nguvu na mzee nimeongea mimi ni nyamaze na watoto ni nyamaze nilikuwa nataka niuse lakini nataka nirudi shule ilivyo desturi katika jamii nyingi za wamasai msichana huhesabiwa kama mali na uko mapindi baada ya kupitia kisu cha ngariba mwanafunzi huyo darasa la saba alifanikiwa kutoroka babake alipotaka kumuoza kwa mzee asiyemfahamu kitinda mimba kwa familia ya watoto sita ananiambia kwamba tayari dada zake watatu waliozwa ila hakutaka kufuata mkondo huo leo yeye ni mmoja wa watoto 28 ambao amenasuliwa dhidi ya kuozwa mapema 
jioni kufika hivi ma, mamangu analia ameomba mbwa nilimpea msana aende shule sasa venye nilikumkuta mamangu akilia hata mimi nikaanza kulia Nika, mamangu akaniambia wewe ka tu bila kwenda shule juu asubuhi ndaenda kwa chief mimi nikaka chief akufika baba alishatoroka akaenda pali kwingine sasa so, huyo mbaba alikuwa asubuhi kufika ndio akuja kunipeleka akashukwa na polisi polisi wakanileta kara nikaishi hapa when you rescue because there's somebody who has already received a dowry and so that means there's somebody who will not be happy and so it, there is likely to be uh, conflict and that is why most of the time these children are just left in these families because nobody wants to go that road half leo hamasisho kama hii inayoongozwa na shirika la kuokoa sichana la kara ikinuia kupunguza visa vya ukeketaji ndoa na mimba za mapema katika kaunti hii Kenya is at 21% according to the Kenya Demographic Health Survey and that's very high among the Maasai we are at 76%. Kwa sasa le Salina na potumaini babake atalegeza msimamo na kumruhusu kurejelea masomo yake. Wengine walio kwenye vituo vya kuokoa sichana wameahidi kujikakamua masomoni ili kuwa kielelezo cha jamii siku za usoni. Sisi leo kesho KT News. Kufikia hapo basi mtazamaji nasemani asante sana kwa kujiunga nasi kwenye kumbukizi mwaka 2017. Kumbuka taarifa ulizotazama ni taarifa ambazo zilipendelewa sana na ambazo mtazamaji ulizipendelea sana mwaka 2017. Mie nimekuwa wako Nicolas Omboa kutoka hapa jijini Nairobi.